What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can make the best even better. It's possible. You see, we made a video a while back called the eight best dumbbell exercises, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make the eight best even better by taking advantage of strength curves. Now I talk about it all the time here, guys. We put the science back in strength. Understanding strength curves could be one of the biggest advantages that you can bring with you to the gym because it could literally take an exercise done with a different piece of equipment and turn it into an entirely different exercise in terms of the impact it has on your body. So I'm gonna show you today how you can take bands, incorporate them with those dumbbells, overlap the strength curves, and make the best even better. Let's get started. All right, first up is the dumbbell curl and press. This exercise appeared in our original eight, of course, as they all are going to be. And I love this exercise because it's a pull into a push. It hits the biceps, it hits the shoulders. It requires good stability of the core. However, we can make it better by doing this. This incorporation of a band here actually takes your strength curves and creates an overlap that makes this a better exercise. So first you gotta see how you set up for it. You wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you grab the band the way I'm showing you here, and you wrap it around the wrists so it's out of the equation. It's not gonna interfere with the movement of the dumbbells themselves. Now, as you can see, if I were to do a regular curl, my strength curve goes up and then it comes back down again, right? It's most difficult in the middle portion of a curl, but when we get to the top, we lose all that tension on the biceps if we're simply just using dumbbells. But with the bands, we know that the strength curve actually continues to go up from the bottom all the way to the top, peaking, at most resistance when the band is stretched as much as you can. So when we put the two together, we've now taken a strength curve that was only hitting the mid-range or only hitting the end range with the bands and now adding the two together so that we have mid-range and the end range. And of course, as we continue to extend our arms up over our head, we now overlapped, almost doubled up on the strength curve of the shoulder press with the dumbbells against gravity to get more from the same movement. Okay, moving on and sticking with the same theme here of pressing, we have the thruster. And this appeared in our original eight because I love the athleticism and the explosiveness of this exercise. And beyond that, we're getting a total body push, right? We start with the legs, we continue all the way up through the shoulders. But we can incorporate the band here and get more out of this exercise. And you might be thinking, how? Because isn't the band doing the same thing? We're sort of resisting the further up we press the weights. Yes, but we also have the fact that with the increased elasticity and tension on that band. The desire of the band to pull our body back down to the ground at the top is going to be incredibly high, which means that if you just let it do the work, it's going to pull you right through the eccentric, losing actually the contribution of your quads to the eccentric loading of the exercise. You don't want to let that happen. You want to try to control the urge of the band to pull you down, and that makes this a better exercise. So with each descent, Fight that on the way down, go down nice and slow, control it, and then explosively rebound and push back through, not just the weight of the band, but again, overlap and have to push through the resistance of the dumbbells as well. So you got that one-two effect here that makes this even better than the original. Number three, we have the dumbbell swing. Now, of course, you could use a kettlebell to do this exercise, but the fact is you're taking advantage of the hip hinge and the overloading of the hip hinge that the swing provides us but we can actually make that even better and actually reinforce the thing, the very element of the exercise I think people miss the most, and that is full hip extension, getting your glutes all the way through the exercise. People will cut this exercise short too much, but if you add the band here, not only does it help you to reinforce full hip extension, but it also serves as a cue to get you into a better hip hinge to do the exercise. This is a hip hinging swing to reinforce the proper mechanics of any lower body movement that should always start with a hinge here. Load up with a dumbbell, put the band around your waist, and finish every single rep, and I promise you this exercise is made much better than the original with no band being used. Let's move on to the chest here, and we included the first time around the one arm bench press. And the benefit to the one arm bench press was that with a single sided load, we're instantly going to trigger the core to be on high alert to try to prevent the a rotation of the body as we press or have to control that weight on the descent all the way down. But you know we can make this better because what we can do is add the band. And what the band can do is, by placing it here to the outside of us, we're not just resisting the push of the dumbbell away, we're resisting the adduction of the arm across the chest, which is a key component to firing up the chest even more. But beyond that, of course, we know that, again, the strength curve here, of the band versus the dumbbell alone, the dumbbell at the top becomes ultimately easy. We can hold it there for a long period of time, but the band has its highest tension there, so we've overlapped the two strength curves to get more from this exercise. Once again, the band and the dumbbell, using those strength curves to our advantage, is gonna create a better option for you. 
If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know how important it is for me to be training like an athlete. The farmer's carry makes its way for sure into the original eight best dumbbell exercises because of the many elements of athleticism that often go overlooked. Starting from our very fingertips, strong hands are needed to be ultimately a good athlete. Strong forearms are needed, good posture is needed. All of these things are being reinforced by the exercise, but of course we can make it better just by doing this. And that is placing the band around your waist. So instead of worrying about how far you can walk around the gym, here you're not going to go very far, but you're introducing a whole other stimulus on your body and your core that you're going to have to deal with while you're still using the same elements of the farmer's carry that were so beneficial in the first place. Again, there's another opportunity here to introduce something new to your training to get an exercise that you thought you could have already exhausted all the benefits of, or you thought just by adding more weight you had no other options to make it more difficult, right here the disturbance that this is going to provide to your core is going to do exactly what you need to get more out of this. One of the lesser known exercises that appeared in our original eight best dumbbell exercises was the crush grip goblet squat that you're seeing here. You see the crush grip goblet squat is a great way to incorporate upper body activation while you're training your legs. Not to mention that the goblet squat position of the dumbbell puts the, the, the weight right into the natural position for your center of gravity that actually helps us to perform the squat with proper mechanics. But you tie this all together now and having to squeeze in on that dumbbell will instantly activate the chest as well. So you're getting that added benefit while you're doing the goblet squat. But you know we can make this better because we understand those strength curves again. With a traditional goblet squat, we are limited to the exercise being more difficult in the bottom of the, ex of the range of motion. And when we stand all the way up, we can sort of lose all the tension that's generated or focused on the quads. But we can do more by adding the band as you see right here. And by adding the band, we've just increased the resistance all the way up to the top. Again, the further that band stretches, the more that tension is escalating, and where we might have lost it at the top of the crush grip goblet squat, we've now continued to have that be there. Nothing has changed in terms of what the impact is on the chest itself, but that's great. We don't want to lose that or compromise that just by adding the band. We want these to be additive and better than the original. The tripod row that you see here was brought to your attention as a way to limit some of the hernia risks that can come from having that asymmetrical leg distribution when you did a dumbbell one arm row on a bench where you have one leg staggered back, you reach down. I've already talked about that in previous videos, how it could present a little bit of an increased risk to hernia. But the tripod row did something different. It created this base of support that was squared off and equal and symmetrical that lessened that same risk. However, we can still make this even better again by including the band. And what you'll see here is I hook the band here down in front of me around the rack, wherever I'm going to do this, wherever I'm actually going to post up and become stable. And then what I do is, because the band is a little bit in front of my body, it actually reinforces on every single rep that forward motion of the arm to create a stretch on the lats that sometimes gets overlooked when we go and do this one arm dumbbell row and we tend to just go up and down. Also because of this arc it prevents one of the bigger flaws that we see with this exercise and that is the over involvement of the biceps if we simply lay, raise our arm up and down. So for multiple reasons we've overlapped the strength curve here so that yes even in that end position here the exercise is going to become more difficult but in the same time we're reinforcing better mechanics of what's going on with that dumbbell in the bottom and getting a better stretch on the lats. And finally, speaking of the lats, I would never include an eight best list without the dumbbell pullover being one of those when it comes to hitting your back. The dumbbell pullover has been called the upper body squat, and I believe it is an incredibly effective exercise, but it instantly gets better when you do this right here, and that is add a band to the equation. So how do we do this? We take the band, we set it up at an anchor point behind where we're going to be pulling from. And what I like to do is I like to just sit on the bench, reach back, grab it, and hook it on the dumbbell. So that now when I grab the dumbbell with both hands, I just put myself in position as I normally would to do the exercise, and I perform the exercise exactly as I normally would. However, once again, the addition of the band has taken this exercise and made the strength curve completely different, or at least overlapped it to make it different. If I were to just do this exercise with a band alone, you know that the hardest part would be holding that pullover at the very end of the exercise. We know that is very different from what we feel when we do the dumbbell exercise only. And that is, it's difficult to get out of the hole, but when we finally get the dumbbell up and over our chest, that is where we get a little bit of a moment's rest. That's where we can kind of ease up a little bit. But when you add the two together, there is no such thing. It starts hard and it ends hard. That means our muscles are being worked in a much more effective way. 
it's time that you start exploring how to make these eight best dumbbell exercises even harder, and I promise you, you're gonna see better results for that. So there you have it, guys. The eight best made even better. I'm always looking out for you, trying to make your training more effective any way we can. I think we just did that again today. If you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, and not just strength curves, but every element of science to back up what you're doing so that you can get better results for your hard efforts, head to athletics.com and get our athletics training program. If you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover here, and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys, see you soon.